horror story, the terrifying night that changed my life forever. I must release this burden that weighs heavily upon me. The events of that night have become unbearable to carry any longer. Every time I close my eyes, the haunting image of death in her gaze and the malevolence in his stare overwhelms me. My fiancé and I had recently relocated to Scotland, settling in the picturesque town of Elgin in the north. We were just two weeks into our new life, everything seemingly perfect. We envisioned a long and joyful future together here, but fate had other plans. It was during the third week that peculiar and unsettling occurrences began to unfold, forever altering the course of our lives. At an unusual hour, 4 a.m., my fiancé received an eerie phone call. She groggily answered, only to be met with repeated faint hellos on the other end, followed by a sudden disconnection. She mentioned hearing faint screams in the background. Disturbed, she turned off her phone to avoid further calls. Moments later, I received a call as well, but all we could discern was a cacophony of static and ominous laughter in the background. My anger flared at this disturbing game someone was playing with us, and I vehemently demanded they cease their harassment. The static ceased, replaced by a jarring thud at our front door. We both jumped in terror. She clung to me, tears streaming down her face. Assuring her everything would be all right, I donned my robe, armed myself with a bat, and ventured towards the door. Drawing the curtain covering the door's window, I discovered a chilling message. You shouldn't have left her alone. As I finished reading, a scream echoed from upstairs. I raced upstairs, only to be paralyzed at our bedroom's threshold. My wife stood there, blood trickling from her neck, her eyes pleading for help, and behind her loomed that abhorrent entity, the very presence that would shatter my life forever. This creature, a tall, naked humanoid, emaciated to the point of revealing its skeletal frame, wore a grotesque bloodshot smile stretching across its face. Its eyes, one grotesquely smaller than the other, radiated malevolence. A paralyzing fear consumed me, rendering me utterly helpless. I couldn't move, couldn't speak, and all I could do was weep. Slowly the creature advanced towards me, clutching my fiancé. It stooped to meet my gaze, and then it began to scream, emitting nothing but static. My terror escalated, but suddenly it darted back to the window, leaping out with her. As soon as they departed, I collapsed to the floor. Desperate and broken, I rose to look outside, hoping to glimpse her, but they had vanished without a trace. Two days later, I was a shattered soul, sleep-deprived and drowning in research, searching for answers for anyone who might relate to my plight. I had filed a missing persons report, and the local police had initiated an extensive search, but no one had ever encountered or heard of the entity I had witnessed. A month passed with no developments. I had not worked, barely slept, and life had lost all meaning. In my despair, I reached for a razor blade and inflicted wounds upon my wrists. As my lifeblood flowed, it seemed as if the torment of the past had been drained away. Staring into the bathroom mirror, I saw him once more. That sinister smile, blood oozing from his eyes, and my fiancé's severed head held aloft. He screamed static and I collapsed to the floor, my strength waning as my wrists bled. Fearful of the mirror, I forced myself to look. My reflection mirrored his visage. I gazed into those terrible eyes where my eyes should have been, where my body should have stood. Slowly, I raised my hand, and in the reflection, I clutched her head. In my right hand, it was real. I was holding my wife's head. I screamed, but only static emerged. As darkness enveloped me, I realized the grim truth. I had come dangerously close to killing my own fiancé. I drifted into unconsciousness, awakening in a hospital bed, disoriented and my wrists bandaged. Two police officers entered, informing me they had questions. They revealed her head had been found in my house, and I was to be detained for the foreseeable future. As they exited the room, one officer's mouth widened grotesquely, and the room filled with nothing but pure static. Please tell me what you think of this video. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a like, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.